the Law Offices of James Sweeting III, LLC. Welcome to the video blog, the Law Offices of James Sweeting III, LLC. Every week from now on, we'll be providing information to our clients, our friends, and our family about current events in the law and things that are occurring in society which may impact upon their cases. It's very important, we find, that clients are informed and knowledgeable, not only to current events, but to things that are going on in Tallahassee and elsewhere. So whether you have a family law case, a criminal case, or any other case, please tune in and watch our blog. And feel free to comment or send us an email afterwards, and we'll be happy to try to respond to you. Once again, thank you for participating. Uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy, and we'll have some unique and interesting information for you from here on out. This is Law Offices of James Sweeney III, LLC. We were on the radio this week at Rejoice, 11.40 a.m. with Reverend Dana Jackson and Justice for All Ministries. Bird, you can call us at 407-834-0909. We are here live in the studio with Attorney James Sweeney. You can ask your legal questions tonight. You can ask questions, and he'll answer your questions tonight. Of course, you know you can't ask me anything legal, but as you can see, I got a praying lawyer in here. That's a surprise. Amen, That's amen. A surprise. We have been talking... Um, and I call him James because James in the book of the Bible. Jesus don't call your attorneys. But I want to say, my brother James, amen. We got a man on fire. Elder, do you hear this? I mean, think he's been holding back uh, with the law books and the motions. We, we didn't know he had that much fire, amen, and as it relates to prayer. Lord have mercy. I'm trying to get calmed down. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to get situated. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, know, you can't do anything without the Lord. So know, you, got, right. you got to go in the courthouse where you go anything, any presentation. You know, we are feeble. We're just... Uh, 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 weeds and willows in the wind yes. but when we get founded and rooted in God we can go ahead and make the statements and be strong in our arguments and our presentation and fight for what we know is right you know I started out when I first came to the state when I first started practicing law I did a lot of work with the NLACP and they would send me to these little towns in the time when there was like Confederate Memorial Day and, or, or any issue where it was a, a racial matter and we would Stand there and I would be by myself, and you know what? I always had the Lord with me because I was never by myself, okay. and I was always able to make the yeah, argument and be strong just because I was one man. Uh, as you can see, I might be wide, but I'm not tall. <laughs> but just the same, the Lord was always <laughs> you know, yeah. just All the right. same. The Lord right. was always with me, and, and and that's really what gives you got to be prayer. I don't care what you are. You're a trash man, a doctor, a lawyer, uh, 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 you know, candlestick maker. You got to be prayed up and have the Lord with you because that's the only way you survive. And if it wasn't for God, I would not be here. That's the only thing that's led me to survive all these years. And so let me just get the community a, a little bit about it. All they know is Pastor Dane got you on the air. She got you praying. So let's, let's move a step forward. Uh, wh where did you uh, do your legal studies at? Well, I, I was born in Philadelphia, and, and I came here. I got a scholarship at Stetson University College of Law back in 1983, well, that, before all y'all were born. <laughs> and uh, I came 1900 makes it sound so long. Back in the day. Back in the day. And they let color folks go and, to law well, school. Well, I was the 13th black person to, to graduate from that law school. Uh, they, I, you know, uh, I presume they were a little bit embarrassed by the lack of... Uh, uh, African Americans there, so they recruited me, and I, I came down from uh, Philadelphia. It was it was a culture shock. It was a strange thing. It was a minimal Marine Corps, but the school was good for me. It was a good experience, and you know I was blessed, uh, you know, to go there and graduate. And I stayed here in Central Florida. I stayed in Florida since that time, and it's been never a dull moment. So you ancient, you historic. Oh yes, I've been practicing law for twenty seven years. African American graduated from Stetson University. I think he's historic. Yeah, well. <laughs> you can put you in my historic party. That just ties right into what we want. Someone historic, not prehistoric. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I might be prehistoric. <laughs> that was dinosaur. That's okay. Four zero seven eight three four zero nine zero nine. Come on and question him, maybe cross examine him. What we like to call, let's vet him real good and see well, if I'm he ready. can. Go. Let's vet him real good and see if he can go in that courtroom and represent some of our people. I know some of you all out there saying if I just had a little change, if I had a lawyer to work with me and give me a payment plan, that's been the cry and the prayer for people for many, many moons. And so I got somebody there to pray with you and work with you and look at your financial situation and give you a payment plan. I, and actually, uh, I, I like when he talk about me here. Like, so I try to ask him, how much you charge for this case? How much you charge for this case? And he got, he... Well, you know, I can never win with the look. <laughs> I can't negotiate with Pastor Jackson. I never win that one, so I tell you what. And one of the things about having a woman of the Lord and a prayed up woman is she comes at you with strength. 
And when she comes to negotiate her situation with you, she comes uh, 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 not only full of heart, but you know, you don't get into this business. You know, it is a business. And I, I don't want to lead people astray, but you don't get into this business uh, simply to be about business. It has to be a vocation. It has to be something that you love because it, it gets debilitating and it gets tiring to be standing up and trying to fight the system. A lot of times you feel like you're the little Dutch boy with your finger in the dike and you're trying to prevent injustice from happening and all around you see injustice and you say to yourself, what can I do? What can I do? And a lot of times you just feel like it's just over and you want to give up. And so it's you, prime time. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you have to do. Call him up. Absolutely. <laughs> that's why you better know when to call him. And, and so you can't survive in this business. I've seen many fall by the wayside. Uh, uh, you just cannot survive if you don't have a strong relationship with the Lord. You don't have a strong family relationship, and your family's well grounded. You know, my my wife has for many years kept me going because she was a you know I was blessed to marry a good Christian woman, and she was very strong in her faith. And when I wavered and got weaker, I felt like it was too much for me. She was always there for me. And that, that's the kind of thing is that, that allows you to continue forth. So like I said, I don't care what you do out there in Radio Land. Like I said, you can be the candlestick maker, you can be the garbage man. It don't matter. you got to be strong in your faith, and then oh, you yeah. will succeed and you Definitely. will succeed. Yeah. 407-834-0909. We got uh, Attorney James Sweden here in the office. And then let's talk about what um, a type of cases uh, you like to work on. I mean, every attorney, you know, they kind of have their favorite side that they, they like to take. Some attorneys take whatever they write to pay the bills. And I just want I want to vet you real good and make sure you're not just taking, so, so taking whatever cases pay. they can pay. You know what I'm saying? You need to be vetted real good because some folks take cases they know they can't win them, but hey, you had a check, they're the cash. Well, what I like to do, you know, I, I, my thing is I like to be of service to the community. So what I like to do is uh, uh, be in a position to be entry level and be uh, a navigator for people. So I, I generally do criminal cases, family law cases, and some probate stuff. But what more normally I do, if I get cases that are beyond me, it's fine for me to be beyond me. I, I know most of the top attorneys and most, I am the top attorney, but I know most of the other top attorneys. Is that right? That's right, that's right. So <laughs> I'm gonna claim it. Yeah. Just yeah, God has blessed me. 407-834-0909, let's talk, let's get in the word. We've been talking about Esther. Uh, James, one of the reasons I had you on the show is that, you know, some of us are just sick and tired of sick and tired of seeing the whole Trayvon Martin, Jeremy Main case, and all this stuff on TV and news and just seem like, you know, the, the bitch get justice the poison, you know. I'm going to fight for 30 years. I'm going to be going in them courtrooms and praying and giving warfare and, and researching things. I want to say to you today that there is an answer and a solution in the book of Esther. She took a stand for her people. Amen. Haman, and we've been talking about this the last couple of shows, Haman had a plot to kill the Jews, and Esther took a stand. And I see myself as an Esther in the community. I want to take a stand and pray and fast. Esther, she didn't have money for a big-time hotshot attorney. She didn't, she, all she knew was God can't fail her. And, and, he, and he won't let her down. And the way, the way it was made for her. You know, I, you, know you told me we were going to speak about Esther, and, and I was excited. Uh, because it is something that we can all learn from the book of Esther. You know, we're all in a position, and you know, I try to tell people and convince people in the community, just like you just said, we're all in a position to do as Esther did. Yes, it, it's, it's overwhelming sometimes that you get again, you're fighting the you know, state and the city, the federal government, and you see, you know. Uh, well, I'm the only qualified Esther in our community. Uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to be the top lawyer, I'm going to be the queen. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I can't step that. Ah. All right, okay. All you junior Esther's out. <laughs> Let me go ahead and talk to y'all for a minute. No, uh, seriously, though. What I want to tell people is that you've got to be, if you can't be Esther, be like Esther. And stand up and you got to get up and speak Do so. to people. you got to be an action person. Yes. All right. And Action see, Jackson. That's right. And see that that that's what I see. See, you know, so I need some cousins and nieces and different. I need some more actions out there. I need some yeah, more yeah. Action. Even the kids got action figures. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they got action figures. All those cartoon people on TV, those were action figures. But we need people that's living and breathing that are qualified to serve on the jury. If you get picked to serve on the jury, you need to stop. Oh, uh, uh, you know, that's one of my, you know, my 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 my. My, oh my goodness, you yeah. can whip there, whip me now. Oh, I've got to call, all right. Give her your well, answer. that's fine. Well, uh, you can reach my office at, uh, my, my phone number is 407-905-5250. Uh, my name is 50. 
Yes, 407-905-5250. Okay. 407-905-5250. But what I, what I want to encourage people listening and you yourself to do is continue to listen to this program because Pastor Jackson and Justice for All Ministries, she's going to have a, a series of lawyers come in here. And she's trying to provide to the community, uh, uh, open the door so that there's information out there. So, uh, you know, if, if you don't reach me, you know how to reach her. And, 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 and let me give you my number. It's 407-285-0415. That's 407. God bless you. Take Thank care. Bye now. Listen, I, I, um, this is all about God. God's word is the law. It is his final authority. I do plan to create some type of directory of lawyers that have proven themselves, they've been vetted, they serve, they give back to the community. And those are people we need to be taking our dollars to. You need to take your money, the people charge you twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars for those who uh, who can afford it and, and never put it to drop a dime back in the black community and you never see your money again. So you wanna if you're gonna spend money on attorney and your loved one is in trouble, try to find someone who who has done trial work and who has been successful uh in, in trial work and that's that's what I want. I want to help you to uh to get justice. Yeah, and, and that, you, know, you call it justice for all ministries, and in fact it is. And if you don't know and you don't participate, which, uh, you know, you can't have justice. See, justice is an action word. And one of the things that I wanted to do uh, and say to you is that uh, uh, you were talking about juries, and we started to do that. So many years that I practiced law, I've dealt with juries. And, and uh, uh, a lot of times, Christian people come in the jury and say, well, no, I can't judge. I don't want to be on a jury. And, and that's I what find, you're here for. And I found that this was because if all the Christian folk ain't on the jury, then who's left? <laughs> right? the devil, right? You got to hey, hey, And then you wonder why people don't understand or don't don't appreciate how people like, like. well, I'm not going to call any specific names, oh, but you know that case up and say, I, yeah, I can I don't do have enough insurance for that. I don't have coach. <laughs> What was, what was that number for you again? 407 8340909. Give us a call to help me to vet Attorney James Sweet. He's been in practice in 27 years. How many trials? How many cases have you tried? Oh my God. Oh, hundreds. Amen. 407 8340909. I know some of my listeners go, Pastor, it was so good. We didn't want to interrupt y'all. We, it was, y'all were just going so good. Okay, but you, you help us to make the show. You help us to make it good. Now, you can text me at 407-285-0415 or email me at God's Word is the Law at gmail.com or call here in the studio, 407. I know y'all saying she need to slow down, 834-0909. We're talking about Esther. Uh, we're talking about God's Word is the Law. His Word cannot return void. It must accomplish that which is sent. God is not a liar. Amen. He may, you can hold God to his word. Amen. If you see in the Bible that, you know, he said he's taking every sin and every criminal case to the cross. My God, God loved us so much, he took two thieves to the cross with him. I mean, why didn't he take the Catholic priest and the one and the, and the rich man to the cross? I mean, ain't, that would be the best candidates to go to the cross with. He took two thieves, which means that God has a heart for prison ministry. Which means that you will go to jail if you break the law and you're found guilty. You go to jail, you'll be sentenced to some time. But God is a God of mercy. Just because the judge sends you to a certain time doesn't mean that you have to serve that time. Because God can turn it around. Well, not only that, but I think a lot of times, you know, what I like to tell people is that, you know, a lot of times is that we have to watch how we perceive ourselves. Because if things happen, we, 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 we surrender to, well, if this is, you know, I'm going to go to prison, or this is going to be terrible, or this is going to be a disaster. So, we need to keep ourselves uplifted. We have a caller on the air. Come on, caller. Okay, well, that's a, that's a federal case. I'm licensed to practice law in the state of Florida, so my practice is limited to the state of Florida. Uh, that's a uh, federal case, well, it could be, well, it's a murder case for the officer, um, it's a civil rights case in my opinion, so uh, I would not be the person that would be handling that. Uh, again, we would probably refer that to somebody who is an expert. Uh, fortunately, there was a video, so that's, that's you know, makes a lot of difference. But, you know, there are many cases, there are cases here in, in Central Florida, we have to talk about South Carolina, you know, this, we, I don't hear much. You know, there was a case here where a young man was shot in a church, through a church window. 
And I don't hear much about that. Now, I'm trying to figure out, because, you know, again, uh, uh, I must admit that I myself must do more. That's why I, I can't hear it. Injustice goes on every day. Yes, and, and it goes on, on here, too. Yes, so, right, you know, know, we right need in to, our front porch. We got to be vigilant yeah. and then take action. But to answer the call this question, uh, no, that wouldn't be a case that I would be involved in. But, yes, I, I am familiar with it and very interested in what is not happening with the police relationships with our community. 407-834-0909. We're taking questions and comments from the community today. We have a Attorney James Sweeten live here in the studio. We have a caller on the air. 407-834-0909. You know, I, I want to talk about this. It just really touched my heart. I was just having a birthday dinner with my grandmother. And I'm going to call her name. I was sharing. A young lady was sharing with me how the police hit her son in high-speed chase. He was chasing another car. Not the car over. And the child was injured terribly and in a coma for three weeks. They would not even tell her where her child was. And she went to the hospital and said, I'm not leaving until you tell my child. And she, she contacted, I'm not gonna say Lord, a big law firm, and he could not sue the police department because while that child was in a coma, they had him sign a waiver. And whatever charges they was gonna try to put on him and say he had this and that in the car, he can't even argue because he don't know he in a coma. He don't know who he did, what happened, or, and it's just, it's a mother, the cry of a mother. And this is why, one of the reasons I'm on the air, and they just kind of pushed that under the carpet. This person was injured. Police car, totaled his car. Everything paid off on the down low and could have sued the department for $2 million. Now he's not going to get well, that because well, he signed a waiver. You know, one of the things that, that you, one of the things your listeners have to understand about the law is that the law is really just an outgrowth of politics. Mm -hmm. And so how people are treated by law enforcement and by the court system is simply a, a, a manifestation, an outgrowth of what their political power is. So that's why, uh, uh, and, and it's very much in our face that as a community, we're not valued, uh, we're not viewed as being forceful enough politically so that people then can get away with stuff such as what you said. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what needs to happen, the first thing that, that needs to happen, and I understand it's not just about one case and, and, and who gets money here and who gets money there, but it's how the overall community is treated. If we want to change this, we need to get out, first of all, and get people registered, get people active, action again, and get people out voting. Because you know what happens? The sheriff is elected. The county mayor is elected. The mayor of Orlando is elected. Well, let me tell you what my parents say. We, our parents say we got a black president and still ain't got no better. Okay, yeah, well, we, we got a black sheriff, we still ain't getting no better. They still shoot down black people. Black. We need to have a black Congress and a black Senate. That, that's what the, <laughs> we got a black see, Congress for a minute. We got to keep on going. See, that's the problem. You can't get one step and think you've arrived. You know, I used to happen when I got my law degree, I think I wanted to go home and sleep because I felt, hey, I've done everything I needed to do. Oh, but you know, my daddy woke me up the next day and said, Well, you gotta get a job. <laughs> so, you know, we got a black president, you know, that don't mean nothing. We still gotta get a job. We got a job as a community to do. That's we right. wanna stop having our children be abused. We want to stop the abuse that we have in the court system. We want to be treated like human beings. Then we got to get up off our butts and get out and vote. That's just one thing. Then we got to go and act beyond that. We got to go to the churches and to the community. We've got to be able to correct ourselves. We can't be afraid we see a child misbehaving. We can't be afraid not to correct that child. We've got to get moving. Well, I'm actually going to be prosecuted for a minute, so we can uh -oh, just have uh -oh. a little jury trial here. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I had an interview with a newspaper company who wanted to say um, about uh, restoring the votes. And so I guess because I'm black, they wanted me to say something really to support the blacks. I'm like, how come they want their rights restored after they committed all these crimes? They want to think about voting for nobody when they was out there doing all these crimes. So I say, oh, you sound like a Republican. Are you a Republican? I said, no. I said, I'm Christian party. <laughs> I said, I'm Christian party. And it's not that I don't want people's rights to be restored. And we know in so many states, after you do your time, they give them their rights back. But she misunderstood. She didn't even let me finish. She said, did you come come get this? You know, she said, I think she was Republican. And I was saying what she wanted to hear. But what I'm saying is, can we register to vote before you get yourself in trouble and you become a convicted felon? What about registering to vote before you get in the car with the wrong people that got drugs under the seat and in the trunk and you ain't know because you caught a ride? What about registering to vote and not having... What about a whole generation of people who have turned 18 who are not registered, who are not convicted felons? We got a whole lot of folks who are not even registered and they don't even have a criminal record. And one day in the sweet by and by, if we keep on praying, then the other ones' rights can get restored when they finish 
serving your time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was looking uh, at the news yesterday because, you know, they had the elections in Ferguson mm -hmm. yesterday, in mm -hmm. Ferguson, Missouri. And we all know about Michael Brown. I hope we all know about Michael Brown. We've been paying some attention to what's been going on and what happened in his particular circumstance. But the fact is that they hired elected two new representatives, African-American representatives, and now that city commission is half African-American. Now, do you think that the employees of the city would have been sending them emails about somebody looks like, I forget what they were doing, but somebody looks like a, a, a monkey and somebody did this and black people oh, don't no. get no job? It's a waste time to it, you, you, that waste time. They, would have, <laughs> they would have been lost their job. It's time for us to take control and take charge. That's right. And then how you do that is you get up and vote. And see, what needs to happen, we don't need to, we, yes, 18-year-olds need to be out there voting. Their parents need to get them ready at 16 and 17. People die. Here I am, prosecuted again. Okay, yes. go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. ready. To, I'm black. No, I think I want that one. I'm go a ahead. black female. I registered to vote, and I voted. And sometimes the people that I vote for didn't win. But I still registered to vote, and I'm not a convicted felon. And that stuff ain't working. People, we we got some black colored folks and minority people in chairs. And so I'm telling you what worked. God worked. Work. What Esther did work. We didn't need nobody to vote. We didn't need nobody to come to the poll. We didn't need Rosa Parks, Dr. Martin Luther King, and all. We need people to put the chicken and the poke chop back. Well, you know, God, God works through different ways, and sometimes He works through you going out to the polls and voting. And what I say about that is that you know, I, you know, I, 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 one time I was a young man, I was a hot shot. I didn't marry the first woman I dated just because the first date didn't go right. Didn't mean I gave up on dating. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. so you know what I'm saying. So okay. if you want to have your reward now, if you want to have your reward, if you want to have your community respond to you, what you have to do. Which you, you have to keep on keeping on. Yeah, you're going to be disappointed. I'm going to be prosecuted again. All right, come on with it. Bring it on. I got to be attorney. <laughs> bring it on. Listen, I like, I like, I like. Listen. So we registered to vote. Even if you're a registered voter, you're still going to have people out there that are a minister to society committing all these crimes and in and out of court with the revolving door taking taxpayer dollars. And we, you turn around and we say, hey, Give our children their rights back after they done robbed you and killed you and shot you up. Give them their rights back so they can vote. What happens when they vote this time and marijuana gets uh, legal and everybody starts getting high every day and nobody's finishing their homework? Well, 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 I, <laughs> Who don't well, get back? Because the vote may win for the marijuana. What you gonna do when everybody be high? Well, I think what's going to happen is that uh, if people going to get tired of getting out. They're going to be, they be as attractive as it is. See what happens just like, like you know, we went through. Alcohol. Yeah. Alcohol. Yeah, yeah we're through this with prohibition. You know, there was a time that I know that a lot, a lot of y'all folks just way before you was born, and I watched the History Channel, so bear with me. But in the 20s, they had this thing called prohibition where alcohol was illegal. And you know what happened? A bunch of monsters and crime and all that kind of stuff happened. Mm -hmm. And all the speakeasy and all this stuff happened. So this is the same thing with marijuana. The fact is, this whole war on drugs was designed as a way to put the thumb on our community. And we need to move beyond that. Yeah, I, you know what? There's a couple of black folks that's probably going to smoke reefer and, and, and not do what they're supposed to do. But there are many more that's going to get over it and move forward and get busy and get industrial. I know geniuses, they smoke every day. They say that's all the way they can I ain't never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to have this in my mess. <laughs> they, they told grandma, say they help you cataract. Well, I know folks are free. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they say grandma don't smoke. So I saw a little something. Say she saw something. She saw yeah, something. She saw something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking to the law. I think and the, the prosecutor won that one. Yeah, the law says <laughs> I'm sticking to the law. That the law says it. you can't smoke <laughs> marijuana. You can't possess it. You can't smoke it. So don't do that. Because what happens is that people don't understand. And this is what happens. You, know, you get caught, you get a little possession charge. What do you think is a little charge? But your driver's license gets suspended. And it moves you further back as far as being able to be competitive within society for jobs and other things. Well, let me ask this. Do you think if the marijuana law passes, then the convicted felons will be able to get jobs to sell it? They can sell it legally then? He was going to get jobs. That's the purpose of voting. Okay. That's the purpose for, for getting in the line to right. vote and okay. getting the marijuana nigga. Is it going to create jobs? No, I already passed it down. It took me back to law school. That was hypothetical. I didn't so know. I, know. I need to know. Because I, I, I voted no. So if it's gonna get jobs like I vote, yes. So you have to if they put on the ballot, convicted felons will be hired to legally sell. Well, you know what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? No, 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 that's no, 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 <laughs> and he said all that money goes. Some of that money gonna stay here instead of going all the way back to California, Mexico, or wherever it's going. Well, I got sixty seconds of preaching. I want to let you all, all right. know that God's word is the law. And now a word for our clients. 
I've practiced law for 27 years, and I've noted over those years that one thing people take for granted is how they appear in court. Sometimes your appearance is almost as important as the facts of your case. When you go to court, you should consider that people are evaluating you based on your appearance. We live in a society where how something looks sometimes is the first thing and the only thing people will judge you upon. So be sure to dress appropriately, but your appearance expands beyond just how you're dressed. It expands to your attitude and your demeanor and how you interact with the other people in the courtroom. My job is to ensure that everybody respects you. But in order to have that happen, you must respect all the other people in the courtroom. Your attitude must be positive. Negative attitudes are easily picked up by the other people in the courtroom, jurors, judge, the opposing attorneys, and will lead to disastrous results. But not only negative attitudes we must look at, but we must also make sure that we appear strong in our beliefs and engage positively with the other people in the court system. So when you go to court, whether or not I'm your attorney, always be sure to dress appropriately and have a positive attitude and demeanor and believe in the success of your case. And that will be with the very first step toward achieving a goal that you desire. Thank you. This is Law Offices of James Sweden III, LLC. To handle your case, come see us at the Law Offices of James Sweden III, LLC.